Welcome to a new episode of my Home Automation Open Hub Node Red playlist. In this video, I look into global variables, in particular how to save and restore them. As usual, links to the supporting documents and code examples are in the video description. In any case, when you are designing a process which uses some predefined parameters, you store them in global variables. Or if you are using the UI to set some values for a process, most probably those will be stored in global variables uh, for the process to retrieve them later. Unfortunately, global variables are lost when Node-RED restarts, so a process wouldn't be needed to save them and restore them on startup. One example for using global variables is uh, what I have done in my sprinkler example, which I've covered in an earlier video. So um, here I want to set times when I want the, you know, the irrigations to start. And um, so I'm going to store these values in a global variable because later on when I check the time, I need to be able to retrieve that, uh, that information. And again, if you are using UI, you probably know that you make some changes on the UI that triggers a, a payload. But um, so you need to process that payload when that when the event happens because you can't do it later on uh, when you know something else starts. So I have a couple of drop downs here for the year, uh, for the hour and the minute, and in the code I'm uh, storing it here. So I'm just um, uh, putting them together to a proper uh, JavaScript date, and I'm using the global set. Um, I'm defining my global variables, comma, and the value that I want to store. And later on, I'm going to compare it with something else. And actually, you can use global variables in the switch node as well. So I'm checking the current payload in which we are pass we are passing the current time, whether that's equals to the to the start time. But if you even if you are not using that, you have um, other options to get the var uh, the global variable, which is really, really simple. So you can do global.get and uh, in the parameter, you specify the, the name of the global variable. And uh, so again, using global variables are really, really simple. Um, I just like to mention that there is, instead of global, you can also use uh, the, the word flow. So that would create a variables for the specific flow, which cannot be used across the across different flows. But for this example, I'm sticking with global. Saving and restoring global variables are going to be uh, simpler than some of my earlier videos. Um, and I've broken the, the problem down into two uh, parts. First is you need to save the variables. And I decided to save the variables to a file, a simple file. And then at uh, when the system starts up, you need to restore those variables. So um, the say you can do the save in many different ways. Uh, if you have specific uh, events when you are setting your global variables or if it comes from the UI, you can just trigger them whenever they get changed. I just decided to uh, use a simpler method, which is create an inject node which executes 2 a.m. every morning and backs up all my global variables. Um, first, I need a function node which is going to do the actual back backup. And what I have decided is uh, in this second line, um, I listed all the global variables that I want to be backed up. So um, I've done this because I might have some global variables which are, you know, sort of temporary. So I don't want to save them. Maybe they should be restored to, a, you know, a, an undefined value on the system startup. So I've created a string variable where I have all my global variables separated by semicolon. So you can see there's quite a few of them. And uh, first what I'm doing is um, I'm splitting this string using the, uh, the semicolon um, so I can you know process each of the global variables separately. And then I have a simple for loop which goes through this array and, um, and it extracts three pieces of information. First, it ext extracts the key, which is the name of the global variable. And then it extracts the type uh, whether it is uh, a string, a number, or a boolean, or um, actually I'm only using these three, so I haven't built a support for any other objects, so I, I don't have a method of restoring objects at the moment. And last, I'm saving the value, which is the actual value of the, um, of the global variable. So again, you can see I'm using the global get and then my list i, um, which is the 
which is the name of the global variable. And um, I'm putting all this information to uh, to the output, and I'm say and I'm pushing that information into the output into the into the payload. So in the payload, I'm going to have a uh, an array of uh, objects. We and each object is going to uh, contain a key, key and a type and a value. And next, I'm going to use the I'm going to use the JSON node just to convert it to a JSON format, which I can save to a file. And if you are interested, this is how it actually looks like in a file. So as I said, you can see the square bracket. So it's an array of objects with key type and value. So let's say I have button state, which is type string and the value is zero. And um, let me pick another example. Um, uh, for example, this is type Boolean and the value is false. And I might not have an example of that, but sometimes the, the type comes as um, uh, undefined. Uh, and those would be the cases where you are using a global variables, but it's just not created yet. So the code is able to handle those cases as well. Let's move on to the restore process now, which is going to be a slightly bit more complicated. Again, we start with an inject and then you tick this one. So inject wants to start up, which is going to make sure that this gets executed when the node red uh, starts up. So you read the same JSON file that you created in the backup process. You again use the JSON code. So it converts the, the, the format into a JavaScript object and you can use it and you can start processing that in, in a function node. Uh, and in, a, in this function node, I'm, I'm doing quite a few things. So again, I'm creating a loop which is going to go through all the items in the in the object. So every single uh, global variable that I need to restore. And first, um, I'm using a, a, a case, a switch case, to um, to say how I'm going to restore various types. So I'm, I'm using the type for that. And uh, as I said, if it's undefined. I'm not going to do anything because it's the the variable wasn't created that, and just for debugging purposes, I'm using the um, I'm pushing some text to the output. So if you want to monitor it, you can uh, just uh, um, attach a um, debug node to it, and you can see on the debug what's the what is it that the the code managed managed to restore and what's not. The next one is um, if the type is a number. And again, here I'm checking whether the the value is an AN. So um, if the backup process wasn't was not able to back up this value for whatever reason, um, then we are getting an AN, and we can't really do anything with that. So I'm just putting a message back into the payload saying that you know this value was an AN, and and if it's not that, if it's uh, a real number, then I'm I'm trying to use this line to determine whether the the number has a dot, and I th um, and I'm just assume that it's it's a float value. So then I'm setting the global variable to to the value which I'm trying to parse as a float value, and again I'm push uh, I put a message back to the payload, and if it's if it doesn't have a dot, then I I try to process that as as, as an integer. So again. There are some assumptions. There are some assumptions in the code, so you need to check if that uh, fits for your purpose. Um, so that was all about numbers, and if it's string, it's easy because I'm just putting the key, uh, the value into the global variable. Again, adding some debugging messages, and if it's a boolean, then it's again simple. Uh, it's quite simple. If it's true, then it's true. If it's not, then it's false. And all I'm doing is putting the uh, that list of strings into the output. Um, so you can put a debug node in here if you want to see what's happening here. And what I'm doing here in this in this big block is entirely optional. Uh, most of my global variables are determined based on some UI. Some, for example, in this example, this hour and a minute and this flag and this drop down. Um, they are all being backed up to a global variable. So when you restore them, you want to make sure that the UI is also updated with the updated value. And the only way to do it is uh, to push the, the value into the UI object. So for example, uh, this is the irrigation hour. And if I look at the, uh, so I'm using a link 
uh, just to make the uh, the uh, the flow a little bit more manageable because they are in a, in different tabs. So I'm just using this link to to inject this value into the um, into this UI dropdown, which is basically this our dropdown. So whenever I'm managed to re whenever I'm restoring the value, I'm also pushing it to the UI, so the UI also gets updated. And that's why that's why I was saying that this is entirely optional, and that this requires a little bit of work because you pretty much have to do it for every single UI object one by one, and it's pretty much a manual work. But the code for it should be really really simple. Uh, mostly what you need is you need the to put the value into the payload but again you have to check the um, each of your UI control to see how they are expecting the the input value but in most cases you just put the uh, the thing in the in the payload so I'm using like you know global get and the time hour so I'm putting back into the into the payload I'm also setting the the topic because in that particular UI element if I go back here, I also have a topic. I don't know if it makes a difference, but uh, um, it's better to do it this way. Sorry, going back to the code. And I'm doing pretty much the same for every single one of them. So usually I set the topic, I set the payload, and I don't even bother getting the data from here. I just uh, restore the value straight from the global because I've just um, updated the global in the previous step. So again, you see the same being done for every single node and um, and that's about it so again uh, in a summary you have a, a backup process which executes on a regular basis or if it's it's uh, you can use a manual trigger uh, to to in uh, to feed it into this uh, function node and then the restart is really easy because that's a simple inject which executes on startup and you read the same um, file and process the values again make sure that if you if you don't have the same folder then you update the folder here in the in the file node on this one and this one as well and as i said uh, the code is written to handle numbers string and boolean global variables if you need to do anything else you probably have to change the code to suit your needs but i think that was it in a nutshell i hope you find this useful and see you in the next video.